Hey everyone and welcome to another stream. This is going to be a very very short stream. So thank you already for joining in. In this one I'm going to show the end result of what it looks like for using web workers. So we're not going to go through the tutorial of it but we're going to look into how it looks when you use web workers and uh, what are those and if they are useful at all. So if you are here for the first time and you don't know me, I'm Mohammed Asan. I'm originally from Pakistan. Uh, I live in Sweden right now and I have been programming for more than 10 years. I'm a Google acknowledged expert in Angular that is uh, a certificate by Google back there that says I'm ex uh, I am an expert in Angular. And I'm also the author of a really cool book called The Angular Cookbook. So we are working on the second edition of the Angular Cookbook and it has so many improvements if you ask me. Um, it's a, It has great tooling, it has a lot easier ways to work with Angular. Um, we're using Annex so upgrading that would not be a problem. We, we have more than 80 recipes in the book and managing that was a problem. Now we have uh, instead of 80 projects or 80 plus projects, now we only have two projects. So if Angular version updates, the, the book will keep up because we will be updating the projects uh, pretty quickly because it's just two projects. Having said that, uh, if you have any questions about Angular, just let me know in the chat. But I want to make it really quick uh, because uh, yes, then I'll be going away. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when it comes to Angular and using web workers. So what are web workers? Why do we use them? And are they even worth trying, so to say? So what I want to focus on today is uh, a recipe from the Angular cookbook that is about using web workers. And I'm going to present you the problem that we have at the moment and then the solution that comes after. So uh, how, how does it work essentially? So let me quickly uh, show the chat as well or actually should be this guy. So LinkedIn users has more power to you. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know why I don't see your name, but that's fine. So here we have an application which has a bunch of cards and I've built this application in a way that whenever the card is rendered, we get a count updated. So for example, if I refresh the application, you can see what happens. So here, now you can see that the first card has a count of three. The second card has a count of two and then all the other cards have a count of two as well. Now, if I try to just click somewhere, let's say I click right here, then I click inside this input. And then if I just click outside, you will see that all the cards changed. The count of the first component or the first card went from three to five. The other ones are now three. So if I click this again, click outside, you can see that the color changed. Now the question is why is that happening? And that is because when Angular runs the change detection, it has to know if something happened. Now, when does something happen in your application? When I don't know when you click somewhere, when you type something, that is the places where something happens and then Angular sees if anything changed. So it runs the change detection then. And right now on purpose, I've built this application um, so that it has a lot of computation. So when we generate these colors, we actually run a really heavy loop. Let me show you what happens when I try to search something. So if I try to search uh, this person, for example, Elfie, you will notice that while I'm typing, it's not going to even show the letters as I type them. You will see a lag. So let's say Elfie, you, you can see that it wasn't this smooth. So something really bad was happening because it was doing a lot of rendering as well. And now you can see that the count actually jumped from three or five to 13 as now this is being rendered. Now, if I go back and remove this, you see there's a loader, but that in, then it hangs for a bit. And then we go back and now you can see that from 13, now Elfie is on 18. So this is the time or number of times that we are rendering each component whenever something changes. And for some reason, for example, the color generation of this one or the other ones have now reached 12. So throughout the life cycle, a lot of components are being rendered as you can see. 
let's say we have this particular button which only updates the name of the first card. So if I click that, let's see what happens. If I click this, you'll see that this went from 23 to 29. These went from, uh, I think it was something around 13 and now it's 15. I think it upgrades uh, twice because we are also running this in dev mode. So if I click this, now this is 17, 17, 23, 25, 19, 19, and this goes to 37, 37 to 41, 45. So this is increasing four times, everything else increasing two times. And that is what happens when you run the usual change detection. And we are also doing a couple of things here and there, but the, the situation here especially is because we are running a very complicated function. And I'm going to show you what the function looks like. So if I go to the app itself, I think this one is the web workers one. And what happens inside is we have a component that has a user card. And in the user card, you will see that we are actually rendering uh, the color, the random color right here. And this random color essentially is a getter. And this getter goes to this function called generate random color. And that runs for a factorial of a number. So right now the randomization count that we have put essentially is really high. So it's, I think it's a, in the config, it should be nine. So yeah, so we are using the dependency injection to provide it. But essentially the nine is, uh, is being used. And then we have the nine factorial times this function running or this loop running nine factorial times and then we generate a random color and then we assign to it right so that means there's a lot of processing going on here and that's why it is super slow so what would happen if i i could take this processing out of the main thread because what's happening right now is that the browser or everything is competing right now to be first so if you can search for uh, good videos about the event loop, you will find some good resources and some good videos as well. But if I summarize it for you, what happens is that we have the JavaScript processing running. We also have another process that is the rendering uh, of the UI. When we are processing a huge chunk in JavaScript on the same thread as the UI layer, which is the main thread, then that means that it's going to block the UI until the process is finished. So whenever the event loop has this has this task called render, it goes there and to the browser and the browser says, no, 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 no. I can't render right now because I'm processing. I'm running this really cool function called get random color. So I can't really render anything. And that's why when I try to type something like iron, you'll see that it doesn't show even until the processing is done or until uh, the whole function has run enough times. And that is uh, that is because it's all running on the main thread. Now, when we use web workers, what happens is we move the computation or this complex computation that we have for, let's say, generating random colors. Now, one would ask, why do you even have this random generate color method running on a factorial of nine times? Just because I wanted to do that. <laughs> and there could be multiple situations where you are actually doing some important computation that should not block the UI thread. It could be anything. It could be, for example, you get some data from your backend, then you have to process it. Let's say you're getting 100 users. I would still question why 100, why not 20? Because a user can only see so much data. And if they want to find someone in particular, they would search rather than scrolling through 100 users. But that's a different story. Let's say you have a situation which absolutely needs computation. In that particular situation, you should not be doing it on the main thread. So what you would rather do is you would use web workers. So when we use the web workers, and I'm uh, I'm not going to be showing the recipe because then it, it um, removes the surprise of the people who are going to actually get the book. But let me show you the end result of what happens. So repeating what we have done so far, whenever I click inside, click outside, there's a re-render. Whenever I click this button, there's a re-render and all the components re-render when we do this. If I search someone, for example, Irene, from 73, Irene goes towards 87, from 73 to 87, just by typing his name. And if I go back, then from 87 to now 93. And you also saw that it, it changed while I was just removing the text as well. When we use the web workers, look at what happens. If I refresh this application, first of all, you can see how smooth 
all of this was. The loader rendered perfectly all the frames per second it could. Then you can see all the components right now are rendering only one time. Then if I click inside and click outside, you can see absolutely nothing happening. No component is being re-rendered because no component needs to re-render at the moment until and unless we have a change in the data set itself. Now, when we search someone, we do have a change in the data set and that is when it should render. So if I go from this place to actually searching Irene's name, what should happen? First of all, you could see me typing with perfection, the name, no mistakes whatsoever. And you can see the count just went from one to two. It is the same application. I've changed just the way we are processing that data, removing the getter and changing and taking the processing to the web worker. And that has improved a lot of the situation where now the count is three and every other card has the count two now because now we have rendered this for the second time. And if I change the name of Irene previously in here, if I change Irene's name, everyone is going to re-render or every component was re-rendering. But now if I change this, you can see only that particular component re-renders. And now you can just realize how fast this is compared to the previous one. The code is almost exactly the same with minor difference of how we handle the data and where do we do the processing. So in this case, even you can see that it's, it's really slow. It, it, it's not instant. It is stuck in the original uh, recipe or, or before optimization. But now here you can see how smooth this is. The count is always going to be what we want to have. That is super optimized. It doesn't re-render all the time. So this is what I wanted to show as in um, how the recipe looks or what are web workers. So to summarize, web workers are essentially different, you, you can call them different threads or different execution context that does not block the main thread and they're implemented in the browser level. So you can take some script that you can move to a web worker, the heavy computation that you would want, and then you would, you would have to make them contact each other. So the UI thread has to send a message to web worker, say, do this computation. And this is completely asynchronous. The web worker once is done, it sends back a message to the UI thread and says, yay, I'm done. And the UI can then just quickly take it and then do the changes on the UI. So it's really powerful. I would highly encourage you to look into web workers. And you're, if you're interested in the Angular cookbook, the link should be in the description of this video. But let me know in the comments what is a topic related to web development or Angular in general that you would like me to look into or to talk about. Having said that, I'm going to actually end this stream. This was a really small stream that I wanted to do to talk about web workers and how, how the end result looks like when you use some of them. If you find this interesting, let me know in the comments and make sure to like the video. Take care.